not making things weird, but Terry. Don't be weird. I'm not. Okay. You were my crush. Oh, that's not weird. No, like, man, I would come home in school and <laughs> boop, I cut on that TV and Mr. Har uh, Steve Harvey show was on. Yeah. And I went, Sandy. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh. I, I just want somebody to call my name. Like. <laughs> Yo, what's good? What's poppin'? What it is, what it ain't, what it could be, what it should be, what it would be. It is I, Cam Newton to some, Mr. Boogie to all. And I'm here with a new set, with a fresh set. You know what I'm saying? Thanks to the team at Iconic Saga. To present to you real content for the masses and the promise to keep it funky for your asses. Today we are in for a treat because I told her when I seen her as she was getting all dolled up and glamorous that I was going to save this for the camera. But without any further ado, she is a actor. She's a director. She's a public figure. She's so talented, so beautiful. The beautiful Terry Vaughn. Yay. Thank you, Cam. Yes. Thank now, can I speak my piece? Please speak your piece. Oh, and, and let me just say one thing. Okay. Um, thank you for that lovely intro. Mm -hmm. um, I've worked very hard all these years for that middle initial J, mm. Terry Javon. So I just, I, I, I just. I present a the loving, song. A, a loving. And correction. introduce to others, <laughs> Miss Terry J. Vaughn. There we go. Now tell the thank people what the J mean. What the J means? What does the J mean? Well, it's just my middle. It's the uh, middle initial for my middle name. That's all, oh. Cam. But I like it. I like the rhythm of Terry J. Vaughn. Yeah. It's Terry Vaughn. That just feels so... Where are you so from, Terry, Miss Terry? San Francisco. San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So in the South, there's like Southern Bells, right? Yeah. Um, me being from Atlanta originally, and doing some time and having a very big impact and an impact being um, on my heart mm -hmm. as my growth was in Alabama. Mm -hmm. And you know, you hear these Southern bells and they just be like, uh, Sarah Lee, yeah. Sarah May, yes. Mary Beth. Yes. So much so that I took a liking of it that I named my daughter Sovereign Dior, a double name. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And it's just a South thing. So when you say Terry J, yeah, you know it just. I agree, and my family's from the South. Mm. So my mother's name is Helen K. Mm -hmm. My aunt Velma Victoria. So okay. it's always the two names. So maybe that's why it rings. My grandma name Hattie me. Lou. Shout yes. out to Hattie. Yes. Yeah. So anyway. So I mean, <laughs> listen. How I want this to go. You mentioned you was nervous. It's no need for you to be nervous, because I operate off of love, which I which I spoke on. And I totally um, feel that. I really, I really want this to be empowering, impactful, because it only a person who's been burnt by the media, mm -hmm. now being in this seat, I just, I don't even like calling this shit a podcast. This shit is just like a candid conversation. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Where I have a beautiful space in Atlanta, uh, Fellowship, uh, Cigar Lounge, and I just literally just like talking to people. So. This is no different than that, you know. We're able to put it on all platforms to be able to not only give us, you know, the opportunity to show what we've been working on, but also for you to speak on what you've been working on. And to that point, mm -hmm. not only are you a amazing actor, but you are a director, and yes. you're directing a project on August 28th, and is that correct? Yes, I directed a project earlier this year mm -hmm. um, in Italy. What? Like, yeah, I was filming in Italy for a month. Mm. Uh, the name of the movie is called Unthinkably Good Things. All right. And it's a movie for Hallmark, but it's the launch of their mahogany brand of content. Mm. So, if you are like many black folks, right. 
we when we go buy greeting cards, we usually buy the mahogany brand of cards. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you've seen that. Like, no, I have not. Okay, so uh, ask any of your female friends okay. in your life or, you know, females in your life. Right. Um, so the mahogany brand of cards are cards that are, are strictly African-American based. Mm. So it's black fathers, black kids, mm. black women, friendships. So it's just regular greeting cards, but there are voice, our pictures. So what Hallmark has done is that they've um, started to make content that is for black women. Wow. Um, which is about time because, yeah. I mean, I'm not a Hallmark, I haven't been a Hallmark watcher. I don't really watch the Hallmark channel. Mm-hmm. Holidays I do. A lot of people do uh, the Christmas movies. Yes. yes. Holidays. Um, but a, a lot of black women watch that network they because they love the stories. Mm-hmm. And so now, at least now, they are creating content that is specifically for us, written by black women, Mm -hmm. um, directed by black women, um, produced by black women. Mm -hmm. And our exec that oversees this launch, it's called the Mahogany Brand Mm -hmm. um, for for Hallmark. Um, It's all all black. It's our voice. It's our sass. It's our beauty. It's our stories. I love it. And I was very fortunate and blessed to be able to direct the launching movie for that brand. And it will air on Hallmark August 28th. Terry J, you better go, girl. (laughs) I like it. I'm super excited about it. You know, I think for, for where we are as a society, as a whole, if we want to go play catch up, it ain't even enough time in our lifetime to repay what all we've been through. Yeah. That's as minorities. Agreed. Now, double minorities, women as well. Listen, we'll be here all day. All day. You know what I'm saying? All day. Just like the things that you guys put up, it just people in general, right? And I don't believe in, you know, playing a pity party but to mm-hmm. that. But tell me how do you navigate through an industry that is very dominated by males, how do you get your footing to make your own impact? Um, you know what I'm saying, for that? I think for me, it's really just about coming from love, mm-hmm. coming from my heart. So I'm in this business for a reason, right? And it's not because I want to be famous. It's not because, you know, I want accolades or any of that. I really believe that my presence in this business gives opportunity or gives um, encouragement and and a voice to other black girls. And, you know, I have a daughter, she's seven. I want her to be able to turn on the TV and like see people that look like her, that sound like Mm -hmm. her, that move like her. Mm -hmm. My grandmother, she's 92. I want her to be able to turn on the TV and see reflections of her and my mom. And that is super important for Mm me. And, you know, I'm I'm such an advocate for young black girls, um, especially those growing up in at-risk communities, because I grew up in the hood and I know what that's like. Mm -hmm. Um, So for me, it's like, I can't stop being in this business because then that's a voice missing for them. So that's what keeps me fueled and keeps Mm -hmm. me going because yeah, the disappointments and all the bullshit that we have to put up with, I'm like, you know, that shit is, yeah. Listen, (laughs) listen, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, it's good. But you know, I I was on this type of time the other day. Big cigar smoker, as you can kind of tell. I see. And big talker, big thinker. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. Why is it that all the superheroes, superwomen especially, template, blueprint, shape, creation is off of what type of woman? Mm. You can say it. The curvy black woman. Oh! I mean, but the face don't match. No, because yeah. I mean, listen, the the one that I'm gonna give you off the jump. When I seen the Incredibles, oh yes, and I said, oh, God yes. damn, Mr. Incredible, shit, what are we doing? I ain't never seen no damn Martha. Yes, you know what I'm saying. That, that not to discredit anybody, but I'm like, golly, yeah. auntie. Auntie look like Cardi B, man. Yeah. Like, yes. what are we doing? I thought the same thing. I was, I was like, like okay. Damn. Where are we go? Even and she flexible? <laughs> look, let me stop. 
Elastigirl? Thick as shit. Like, let me stop. Yeah, yeah. No, I hear you. But I mean, you know. Come on now. You know. But I for mean, years, though. Years. Yeah. And it just, I just thought about it because when I was talking, you know what I'm saying, to my homeboys or, or just to any social group, I was like, damn, every superhero in some way, shape, form is cultivated or crafted off of a minority sculpture. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you call it culture vulture, you call it whatever. I call it creativity. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because one half of it, you can look at it and you can play, you know, oh man, you know, they've been biting our style for years. But also to give you your credit, it's not a lot of people who look like that who has an opportunity to impact or wants to impact, like you just said. If you leave or you don't do this anymore, there's a voice missing. Yeah. We need more voices to say, no, nah, man, I'm standing on this and this is what I believe in. This is who I'm representing because I'm saving a kid from being in you know, Atlanta, Georgia, College Park, mm -hmm. uh, Compton, uh, Maryland, wherever, and wherever it might be, it's just something that could be prevented because if they can look on TV and they can say, oh man, Terry J, I don't even know who she is, but she cool, I can relate to her. That's right. And it's me? important. It's important for young people to um, just have references that they, can, that they can recognize, that they can either even dream about or aspire to or, or yeah. see like that's doable. Yeah. Like, and it's so, it all is doable. Right. It's like, you know, I I mean, I grew up in in a, in a rough neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I had no idea I would ever, I never even dreamt about where I am right now. Yeah. Because I didn't even know to dream that. Mm. I just didn't know that. Yeah. Um, so now when I'm working with young girls, I'm like, the sky is the limit. They have to see us thriving yeah. and doing amazing things and and um, achieving abundance and, so that they know it's so doable. It's, it's tangible. It's, Very. It's tangible to, to, to get this done. So I just wanted to say, right, not making things weird, but Terry. Don't be weird. I'm not. Okay. You were my crush. Oh, that's not weird. No, like... Man, I would come home in school and boop, <laughs> I cut on that TV and Mr. Har uh, Steve Harvey show was on. Yeah. And I went, Sandy. Yes. I was like, oh, I, I just want somebody to call my name. Like, <laughs> golly, Lord G. And you know what I'm saying? To see you now, when I seen the opportunity that I could talk to you, I was like, nah, I ain't gonna make it weird. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. It was like 93, kind of 2002, 2003 shit. I was, that was the harmonic years of my <laughs> life. I mean, I, I'm going to sleep, man, with, with, with stiffies. Not, oh, man, my my, God, my oh, my, my God, Cal. Oh, my God. But listen, my hormones are going crazy. I don't know how to think. And the, going back to what we see on TV, I'm like, man, yeah. man, I seen something black. I seen something beautiful. I seen something submissive. I seen something strong, not weak. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, that's what I want. I want my prom queen to, to be just like that. You know what I mean? Aww. So, yeah. I love that. That's so yeah. beautiful. So, yeah. That's so romantic. Uh, yes. <laughs> but but brash, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it, it's coming. Look, it's coming from a loving place. It is. With no harm intended. Um, but I would say this, too. You know, for the female viewer that sees this, because I have a daughter, mm -hmm. right? And I, How I'm not, old is she? she's 15. Uh -huh. She's 15, yes. I have seven kids. So we got 17, 16. No, 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 no. She's, huh. yeah, it's oh hitting me. 16, 15, uh -huh. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Jeez. Yeah. But I want more, though. Oh my God, Cam. Listen, there's. That's a lot. But listen, though. They get the love that they need. Oh, I'm sure. If they didn't, I wouldn't do it. And I've never seen, and I say this respectfully, I've never had nothing in my life outside of my religion that has that much control to keep me on a straight and narrow mm -hmm. than my children. Oh, yeah. So it's like I got so much love to give, and I give it to them. 
And I'm like, man, this is just what life is all about because, you know, I, I always foreshadow my life, you know, God willing, as my grandma had Lou would always say, God willing, if I ever get to like 70, 60, 80, and around the holidays, the only thing, I mean, when you got money, the only thing yeah. that you're going to look for is you just hear them foot. Hey, who did that? Chill. You know, you start hearing out. You that's, have a lot of grandkids. Man, listen. You have a lot of grandkids. I, I, I just. Be a house full. Oh, I love it. I love it. And that, that just puts me at ease. So, I mean, a lot of people in this day and age are like, uh-uh, you doing too much. But I'm like, uh -huh. you ain't doing enough. I got a plan. You know what I'm saying? If I ever brought one of my children into this world and all my children was brought into this world out of love, mm -hmm. doesn't matter where we are as their mom is, mm -hmm. it's still love there. But at the same time, I just love my kids. You have a uh, child as well. I have three. Oh. I have a 21-year-old. Okay. 21, That's 21. the one I was, um, if you remember the last season of the Steve Harvey show, I was pregnant. Mm. Um, so my oldest real son is pregnant. 21. Yeah, I was pregnant in real life. Mm. <clears throat> so my oldest son is 21. I have a son that's 14. And then a daughter that's seven. Okay. Beautiful. Yes. How does, how does this industry... Hold on. Before I get to that, uh -huh. I, w I, w I want you to talk about... And this is going to segue straight into what I was about to go to, but I won't. Where did you come from and how did the opportunity present itself for you to be who you are? Take us through it. Um, meaning to get into the business. Right. So I grew up in San Francisco. I went, to, I was going to Cal State Hayward, um, which is also in Northern California. And really, I had no idea what I was going to do as a career, I just knew I wanted to be a successful businesswoman. Mm. So I was going to school to be a successful businesswoman. I ended up in advertising. Um, but while I was in college, there was a friend that was recruiting girls for the Miss Black California pageant. Mm. And so me and some of my friends, we were like, whatever, we'll do it. Fuck what it. what you do in the pageant? <laughs> you know, how that, that, that works. Yeah, <laughs> so we did this pageant. And I had no idea what I was going to do for the talent part because, mm. you know, I don't sing. Well, I do sing, but it sounds terrible. Mm. We all I, do. I, you know, I, I don't dance. Well, I dance, but it ain't nothing special. Mm. It's special to me, you but groove. to nobody else. You know uh, Yes, I groove. Um, so I didn't know what I was going to do for the talent. And um, I was talking with my mom and my aunt. And so we came up with this idea that I was would do a monologue from the play um, for colored girls who who considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. That's the name of the, the play. What? So I took a monologue from that play and I performed that in the pageant. Mm -hmm. And one of the judges of the pageant was a producer that was casting for a stage play that they were getting ready to take on tour. And after the pageant, he asked me if I would be interested in auditioning for this play. Mm. And again, had no idea about nothing. Not, none of it. I was like, so what do you do at an audition? What do you do? Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> Yo, so your name is what now? <laughs> right. So he gave me the information to come to the Black Repertory Theater, which was in um, Berkeley, California. So I, I show up at the theater when he tells me to come. He told me to bring a picture and bring a resume. I was like, okay. So I, the night before my audition, I took a picture. Now, this is how long ago mm. it was. I, I had my college roommate take a picture with the Polaroid camera. Right. So I... <laughs> yep. Yep. So that's what I brought for my picture to my audition. And my resume was a regular working resume. How many pictures did you take, though? Just uh... I just... I brought one. I mean, I probably took several. I swear. And I had on way too much makeup because oh. I didn't know what I was doing. I did my own makeup. It was like pink up here and <laughs> pink cheeks. As I said, friend, terrible. love. That ain't nothing but good love. That ain't, that ain't nothing. You know. Terrible. Soulful chick. That's yeah, all. Very soulful and very sassy. Mm. Um, so I go with my picture. I go with my regular working resume. I was working at the Marriott Hotel. Mm. I had worked at Avis, McDonald's. So that was my resume I brought to my acting Audition. Debut. 
Yes. Right. The first time acting, first time. First time doing any of it. So I get to the theater and the lobby is full of other actors that are auditioning. Mm -hmm. And they're like real actors. Like yeah. they've been studying theater. Right. So they're like doing their theater exercises, yeah. like mm, humming, mm -hmm. stretching, doing all this weird You're looking shit. Around, like, like, nah, 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 doing yeah. all this weird stuff. And I'm just like looking around like, ooh, these people are weird. Mm -hmm. um, and so they finally call my name. I go in and I meet the director and the playwright. And so they give me some material to read. And so I take it and I read the material. And the director, who was like super artsy, mm -hmm. a thespian who had studied at ACT in San mm -hmm. Francisco, he wore Birkenstocks chewing on a, a, a liquid tree bark thing. Mm -hmm. So he was super, he almost looked like a homeless man, mm -hmm. but he was just super artsy. Yeah. And he changed my life. Wow. His name was Paul Roach. And um, so he gave me the material, I read it. He gave me some notes. He was like, look, uh, this character is really sassy. Um, so can you read it again? And this time, you know, just do it. Put sassy. that sad friend in there. Exactly. <laughs> what I used to get in trouble for all the time, being mm -hmm. too sassy and flip with my mouth. Right. And I was like, oh yeah, okay, I could do that. Right. So I easy. read it again, Pfft, easy. <laughs> and they called me that <laughs> night and offered me the part in the play. What? And I was like, what? Yes, mama, they offered me a part in this play and blah, blah, blah. Should I go? Can I go? And she was like, yes, mm. go. When and is that old, ever going to happen to you? I was um, like 20. Okay. I was like 20. And, um, but I left school. I left school to do this tour. And um, the blessing was Paul Roach, mm -hmm. who was our director. He toured with us. And he started training us in the craft of acting. Wow. Introducing me to all the theater grades, the books to read, um, the movies to watch. And I just got bit by the bug and mm. I loved it. And I was like, this is what I do. Mm. This is what I do right here. And I just kept studying and kept doing it and moved to LA after the, that tour ended after about two years. And the rest is oh my her goodness. story. So I like what you did with that her story. Yes. Um, but as I was reading just things about you, right? Mm -hmm. And if that story isn't a perfect indication of just having faith. Yes, absolutely. Faith. Absolutely. And, you know, my father's a preacher, so I come from the cloth, mm -hmm. as they say. I know what's right from wrong. I just don't always do right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Sure. But, you know, he who cast the first stone. Um, I would never. You know, the thing is, you can't have faith and fear right. at the same time. Right. And in this phase of my life, mm -hmm. I'm operating all off faith. Yep. And just like you, you just jumped out and said, you know what? It's going to be what it's going to be. And God take the wheel. Like, yep. let me, no Tesla auto ride. Like, this is cruise control. Yep. Boom. I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to do my part with yep. preparing you give me the instructions, I'm going to do that. You did that, and it led you to who and what you are right now and what That's you right. represent. And I'm big on that. So I want you to speak on um, just the energy. You know, you're big on manifestation. How do we get to that point, too? Um, again, it's, it is all just grounding in faith mm -hmm. and um, just knowing that my presence here is the gift, mm. right? So I go into spaces not looking for what am what am I gonna get out of mm. this? What can they give me? What it's more of what can I give them mm. in this moment with you right here, right now? What can I give you that is gonna make you right. just happier or more peaceful right. or something? Whether it's a smile or a laugh or a joke or mm. whatever it is. Um, what can I give? And I, and I operate in that space. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very protective and it's been developing even more as I've gotten older right. because, you know, you, you get jaded at times and you just feel like, um, you know, you're always fighting, fighting, yeah. fighting. And no then results. just as you, yeah. And yeah. as you get older, you like, just relax mm. because 
whatever is whatever is yours and whatever is 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 meant to be it's going to happen if you relax right. and let it and stop trying to fight mm -hmm. for it to be something that you think it should be mm -hmm. so like that time in my life when i just felt free and excited to just jump and take an opportunity i was just I was just that. I was just free. Mm. And there's no better feeling in the world or no better place to be than free. And, you know, when we try to control stuff or make it the way we think it should be, then we're, we're just fighting and we're not free. You're forcing, you're forcing, we're forcing a it. Yeah. In a flathead, a flathead, and yeah. a, a Phillip head. And it's just, it's just making it. And I'm just not it. there anymore. Yeah. I'm just not there anymore. I just, I feel more free now than I have, you know, in many years. Like, I feel like I'm, I'm that young again. Mm. And all the opportunities are, opportunities are just opening up, and I'm just, like, taking advantage of them as they're coming. Right. So even to that, which going back to my uh, world that I was about to speak on, is being a parent and having this yeah. lifestyle or being in this industry, uh, you have to be very strategic. It's almost... My my hat goes out or is tipped off for female athletes, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. speaking of, we have to do. I'm I'm putting kudos every single time I got an opportunity to speak on it. I will. Brittany Griner, she yes. used to come home. Yes. Like, what are we doing? Yeah, that uh, makes me but very sad. <laughs> even yeah. to that point, it's like, as a male, you don't have to think about mother. Or, you know, Mother Nature's, you know, monthly due diligence, yeah. right? You don't have to think about other hormones that kind of comes with it. It's just play your sport, ah, be tough, be yeah. great at it, and perform. Now, as, as a female, as a woman, right. it's more tender. Yeah. You know, heaven forbid if you have children. Yeah. Even if you play, I, I was seeing some MMA fighters, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. They have to you know, be so tough, but so tender. Yeah. And one young lady, I, I'm not sure what her name was, she was even in the, um, the weigh-in, and you know how they do the face-off. And it was such a cute, um, you know, portrait of her facing her opponent and her daughter right there just doing the same thing because oh. that's what her mom was doing, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But how do you balance that life knowing that, okay, I have a career to sustain, but, I'm still a human being, but more yeah. or less, I'm a woman. Yeah. You know what I mean? How does yeah. that work? Um, for me, I get, it still, it goes back to my purpose. Mm -hmm. Like, if I'm living in my purpose, then what I'm doing is a gift not just for me. It's a gift for my kids. It's a gift for my family. It's a gift to all of you. Right. Um, and so I try to make sure that my kids know, like, Mommy loves her job. Mm. And when you, as you're growing up, I want you to do stuff that you love, right. stuff that matters to you. And I always think that them watching me do this, it's feeding them to feel free to do what they love mm -hmm. and what they want to do. Um, you know, and it, it gets hard sometimes when you have to be away and, you know, you miss the babies right. and, and have to make do the calls yeah. and my daughter's crying and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, and I have to give kudos to my husband because mm. he's fucking amazing. Yeah. Like, he's a great What's dad. my boy? What, what, what's his name? Karan Riley. Karan! No, no, no middle initial? <laughs> Actually, it's a J, too. Oh, my It's Joseph. Goodness. His middle name is Joseph. Karan J. <laughs> my guy. <laughs> My brother, kudos to you. Yeah, he's right. he's amazing, and he makes it easier for me because you know, as a as a woman, as a mom, there's that guilt thing of being away yeah. sometimes. Oh my and goodness, he eases that shit for me, and and that's the best gift he could give me. But check, so how how long have y'all been married? Fourteen years. Fourteen. So this is my second marriage. I was married before okay. when I had my oldest son, okay. and. Um, there's just a huge difference in this marriage. In this, it's, it's just the the support is is everything for me because I want to be free to be me yeah. to do the things that I love, and I don't want something hanging over my, you know, hanging over my head, making Looming. me feel guilty yeah. for doing oh, your job. Yes. So my question is a personal question, and mm -hmm. we can we can just pass it. Is he a stay at home dad? No. 
He still. He, no, he um he used to play football. Okay. Um, and when he retired, he started acting. So he's an mm. actor too. What? Yeah. So he understands. So I will ask the question, you know, all the time to people, is number one, and this leads me to this. Right. Let me ask this first. The state of black love mm -hmm. in this culture, the millennial Gen Z culture. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about it? I don't know if I have an answer for that. But what you see on TV, what you see on the platforms, right? You know, the music that's being made, mm -hmm. the content that's being delivered. Um, you know, Some of it's good and some of it's not. Okay. You know, there are artists that put out amazing stuff that I love. And then, um, and then there's some stuff that is just... But it's always been this way. Some stuff that is just like, what are you, what are you doing? It's like, setting us back. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, what is that? Um, but, you know, it's just, I really don't have an answer for that one, Cam. So it's just, for me, I always like to ask people, who's the relationship of the culture? Like, who represents us? You know what I'm saying? You know the first people that pop in my mind. Who? Was Jay-Z and Beyonce. Right. But they're untouchable, though. They're totally we know, we know untouchable. Nothing. We know nothing. But I nothing. love that they do that. Right. But the thing is this, right? And the reason why they are at an elite status, I believe, is that main thing that I just said. Yeah. Nobody knows anything. I agree. And the thing was, if we didn't have those damn surveillance cameras about that damn... Right. Um, the elevator. The elevator shit because right. there was pictures after that went down and they were still holding hands. Yeah. yeah. They were still courting and each I, other. I love that. And it, it just is what it is. Nowadays, yes. you got relationships that feed off of, oh, you know, let's post this and let's put it out there. Let's fuck up their yes. feed. And it's like, listen, I'm very meticulous about my personal life. Yes. And As I just got comfortable with posting my children. Yeah. Because I want to make being a black dad cool again. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And changing that narrative. Yes. So once I came to that grips, I was like, listen, I'm posting my kids as much yes. as I possibly can. Same. Just to make the dude that's out there that may not have the structure that I may have or the access that I may have, but when he says, bro, when I do good, when I get a little piece of money, I'm going to take my kids to Six Flags. Yes. I'm going to take my kids to Disney World. Yes. Or I'm going to just go have a donut day where I could just take them to get, you know, 50 cent donuts. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And that's and my time with them. I think that's how our platform should be used. Mm -hmm. It's like, what are you using it for? What are you saying? And not, and not telling lies. Mm -hmm. you, you're not like making fake post of right, your right, kids right. and what you're doing. Like you're showing your real, how you really feel about your kids and how right. it should be and inspiring another dad right. to do the same, right? Correct. So my, my daughter ice skates. Very few black young mm. girls at the ice skating ring. She's been ice skating since she was two. I love posting her competitions mm -hmm. and her ice skating when she's um, practicing because I want to inspire more black girls right. to because that's to something that. we didn't dream about. To that's something that. we never even thought about. Right. So I love showing that. It's all purposeful. And I totally agree with you about these couples or just people who are posting everything in their lives and not leaving anything yeah. personal in your relationship. Yeah. I no, think that's no, detrimental. It's, it's, it's no, it's no, uh, what's the word? Not suspicion. It's no kind of like, I wonder what this is like. Right. Because you're going to see it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, and and it, nothing is sacred. No. It's like, what's sacred in your relationship? That's what makes right. the relationship special because there's things that's only between the two of you. Mm. Like the world may see something else, but th but you're not seeing, you know, you beyond know what it's called? that. Family business. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, like, you know, you had them old folks in, in the household that say, hey, now listen, hey. You know your brother fell in all his classes, <laughs> but this family business. I don't need you to go out there yes. and you tell Tay Tay and, and, and John That's John, right. you know, that he fell in. He gonna get his behind whoop when he get home. Yep. He gonna get disciplined however I deem he gonna he needs to get disciplined, but this ain't for everybody to know. That's right. When me and your daddy argue, it ain't for you to go tell your dog on teacher that my mom and my daddy are always arguing. That's family business. These days ain't Everything. no family business. Right. 
you got all these blog sites. That's so they want to be the first to post. And I think I, I seen something where um, um, uh, is it Vanessa Bryant? She's suing. Uh, oh yeah. And I hope yeah. she get every. Dollar. I do too. I hope she get every dollar because there's so many people that wants to be the first to post. You heard it here first in yeah. Terry J News coming back. Like, yeah, bro, first terrible. off, sit the fuck back. And I believe if you got a sneak to do it, you yeah. ain't supposed to be doing it. Yes. Meaning, if I'm if I'm eating dinner with my family, with my significant other, with my brother, with my business partner, with a friend. And you got to hit me with one of these. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Bruh, hey, big dog, just come yeah. ask me for a picture. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I still am reserved the right to, to say, say no. no. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I always ask people, I say, hey, are you asking me to take a picture? Or are you telling me to take a picture? Right. Because if I ask you, hey, Miss Terry, oh, man, you're my crush. I love you on Steve Harvey's show. I, I heard that you got a Hallmark thing coming out, man. I just want to take a picture with you. If you say no, that's cool. Because most of the times, if I am saying no, I'm daddy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I'm, 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 I'm protecting yes. my yes. cubs to the degree that they don't deserve to see me. They know who I am. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's crazy enough, my younger children may not ever know me as a football player. Yeah. They know, like, oh, man, that's your dad. Oh, man, he's so cool. I mean, obviously, I pull up, you know, and I look forward to, you know what I'm saying, taking them to school. And when I drop them off, when I pick them up, it's like, oh, man, that's a cool car, man. And I try to keep it conservative. Right. But, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't, you are who you are. You know what I mean? I, don't, I didn't <laughs> never do what I did just to just fit in. You know what I'm saying? But respectfully to them, yeah. it's just something that they could be proud to say because we all got those little uh, kindergarten, uh, 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 grade school things. I bet my daddy beat your daddy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's one of them things like, oh, my kid's going to be able to say, listen, man, my daddy is the shit. You hear me? Yes. And mean it. But yet, going back to the relationship, I think, you know, we have to do a better job with the, like protecting each yeah. other. It ain't for everybody business. Man, let me tell you something. Because the thing that I don't like, is you're quick to post the good. Right. But you don't post the bad. And some of the good is fake. Yeah. Come on now. Uh, every time you post a doggone video, right. you, you on vacation? Every time. Come on now. What do you do? <laughs> you feel me? It's tainting, it's tainting the brand. You feel yeah. me? Like what, like, what did you do to get the coin to go to vacation? Yes. Yes. You know, some of us do ride spirit. You know, and it's okay. Some Come of us on, ride. Not spirit cam. It, Southwest. But Southwest, okay. Spirit. But no. people ride it. Oh. Don't just sit up and they in business somehow. I guess so. You know what I'm saying? But okay, even I'm if you do, even if you do, everybody don't got that Terry J coin to say, oh, I'm 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 a diamond. <laughs> Plat, plat, you dig what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm a member of the Delta Club, you feel me? Uh, and then it just makes it because when you just post that, it's just like, oh man, I gotta keep up with that. People who follow uh, yeah. you, it's like, oh man, I gotta do that. If it ain't that, yeah. then whatever. I'm a big opponent of, man, listen, I, I, I'm an artist in my own right. Yes, you are. I believe in free spirit. I believe in being uniquely you. And anytime I have an opportunity, sometimes, you know, I don't be feeling like talking, but I let my my fashion speak for me. Yes. You know what I mean? I'm big on details. The reason why I got the bow tie is the reason why I got the bow tie. I want you to see the pocket chain. I want you to see the pocket watch. I want you to see the lapel pins. Yes. I want you to see, you know. I want you to see my four finger like, ring. Like, come on now. Come on I got now. another ring that I need to give you. I told you I got like six other ones okay, that you can put I'm on your on thumb and your I'm pinky on. and your... All that. But that's <laughs> that's you being you. Yes. And we need to promote that. Yes. But for the sake of, you know, love... I think for us, it's just like, man, let's just, let's just, let's show the real. Yeah. You know, I, I've been, I've been crucified by, for speaking my mind and some mm -hmm. things, you know, I did jump the gun, but some things it was just like, man, listen, I'm just speaking on some shit that most people wish they would say. They feel the same way that I feel. But you sit up here and you be on TV and you're a puppet, yeah. Pinocchio, because yeah. you got to act a certain type of way. Yeah. Be a certain type of way. But to the point that I was asking about you and your husband, all right, I would always ask, could you date a person who makes lesser money than you? Oh, I 
I have? Because it's two things. You can't have them both. Yeah. You either got a lot of time and no money, or you got a lot of money and no time. With no time. Yeah. I've done both. I've done I've done I've done it both. So I don't have a preference of I have to be with somebody that has more money than me. Mm -hmm. I have to be with somebody that has drive. Mm -hmm. I have to be with somebody that has their own identity that is super confident, mm -hmm. that has their own shit going on, that don't have nothing to do with me. I have to be with somebody like that. Right. And I am. Right. So to that, does that person, you know, for for you and your better half, like, what's you guys' outlet? Like, what do you look forward to when you get back in town from alone, when yeah. you was in Italy or whatever, that you just look, man, or you may catch yourself as you're writing these scripts and you're saying to yourself, man, you know what? I just want to go to Golden Corral and just kick the shit, like... I just want to go skating. We love that. We love hanging out. We mm -hmm. love going out to dinner. We love drinking cocktails. Mm -hmm. And we love laughing. Mm. I got to be with somebody that makes me laugh. Yeah. And he's funny as hell. Yeah. He makes me laugh. I like that. I love that. Man, listen. I think for, for the overarching thing, and, and really before we kind of get out of here, I also want to give you a platform to really speak on whatever you wanted to do or that you're doing now because I created this platform, Funky Friday, because I want people, as we say, you know, in our culture, man, keep it funky. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, talk your shit, you dig? Yes. Um, <laughs> and that's pretty much what, what I wanted to do. So for every single one of my guests, right, I just yes. wanted to give them the platform to just speak on something that can impact and empower. Okay, so I'll um, I'll just list list off a few things that I have going on okay, cool. um, besides the movie that's coming out on right. the twenty eighth um, because I still I deal I do still act mm -hmm. and direct I right. love them both mm -hmm. equally everybody always asks which one do you love more I love them both and right. I can do them both absolutely so um, in front of the camera. Um, there's a TV series called Johnson that is airing on um, Bounce right now. Mm -hmm. I think they're on. We're on the fifth episode, but she's a really saucy character. You guys will love it. She's a principal, and she's just having a little thing with the little maintenance man, and hey it's now. fantastic. Hey now. Um, and I'm on a television series called First Wife's Club mm. um, on BET that will be out. This is the, ooh, what season is it in? I can't remember. But anyway, this new season, when it drops, I'm on that seat, that show. And I'm also on Ava DuVernay's uh, Cherish the Day mm. that, that airs on OWN. Um, all the characters are all very different, but they're all very beautiful and lovely, and you guys will enjoy them. Yeah. Um, and then as far as directing the um, Unthinkably Good Things on Hallmark on the 28th, and also, I directed an episode of Tales on BET. I directed their first romantic comedy mm. episode. Because, um, you know, Tales is very grimy, yeah. um, dark. And so they hired me to direct their first comedy, mm. comedic episode. And that's going to air on that's the 30th. That's the Irv Gotti yep. thing? Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 yep. So that's on BET. The new season started already, but my episode drops on the 30th. Mm. Of August. So, as she stated, man, please check that out. I mean, run to check it out too. Don't walk. You hear me? <laughs> um, but that's that's it, man. Miss Terry J. Thank you so much, Cam, for having me. I'm man, so proud of you. you. So proud of you appreciate and your team you. and what you guys are doing. It's amazing. Yes, man. So as we end things here at Funky Friday, as I always <laughs> do, we got to do it in unison and we're going to do it together, right? We're going to use each one of our cameras. We're going to start right here. Okay. Then we're going to go there. Okay. And then we're going to finish right here. Okay. Right? What am I doing? We're going to say one finger. One finger. One pinky. One pinky. One thumb. One thumb. One love. One love. Yeah, <laughs> Sersky.